So you need to log SQL statements in your Spring Boot application and probably you Google for that already and you have seen that there are plenty of options. I want to cover two options that I find very useful depending on the context, depending what you actually need. And the first one is the, the one that is built into the Spring Boot. So if we go to Spring Boot reference docs, you will find a chapter about the log groups. And one of the log groups is SQL. Log groups work in a way that they just apply the some logging configuration on multiple loggers at once. So in this case, whenever we change the log level on the log group SQL, it will turn on logging for org.springframework.jdbc.core or the org hibernate SQL or the one for Juke. So it means that no matter if you're using JDBC template, if you're using hibernate or if you're using Juke, this solution will work. I'm working now on the Spring Pet Clinic application. So basically, whenever I refresh this page that lists vets, there is, there is some SQL statement executed in the background. But of course, if I go to the console, I will not really see anything yet because I didn't do anything in the configuration. So if I go to application properties now or application YAML, depending on what flavor do you use, and I will just add here logging dot level dot sql and i will turn it into debug and i will restart the application i will see the basic logging statements in my logs but these logging statements will not be perfect and you will see in a second why Okay, so the application is up. It took longer than expected. There's something funky happening on my laptop. But now when I go back to the browser and I will just refresh this page and I go back to my console, I will see some SQL statements log from Hibernate. So you will see all the SQL statements made during this one request, but they will be missing the parameters that you actually pass to the queries, right? So you will see the SQL query, but you will not see the parameters. You will also not see any details like how long this uh, query took to execute and any other details that you may find useful. Of course, if this is what you're after, like if you just look for the SQL statement without the parameters, this is enough and, and you can be and this is basically where you could pause the video and already use this approach. But there's also one approach that I find more useful if you need more details. And this is uh, the one with the data source proxy. There is a library data source proxy that basically proxies all the calls to the database and adds some extra capabilities like adding logging, measuring time, and so on. If you use it with plain spring, the configuration is fairly simple. You just have to wrap the data source in the proxy. If you're using spring boot, it becomes a little bit tricky because it conflicts a bit with the auto configuration. There is an article how you can configure this lab library with spring boot, but basically through setting up your own bean post processor. But if you don't want to do it, I didn't, uh, you can use a ready to use starter, spring boot data source decorator that integrates not only with the data source proxy, but it also integrates with P6 Spy or Flexible or also Spring Cloud Sleuth. You don't have to use them all, you can just choose one of them. So let's now go back to the pet clinic and use the data source proxy together with a Spring Boot Starter. I will remove this line because we don't need it anymore. And I will just copy the dependency for the data source proxy Spring Boot Starter that I will find somewhere here on the GitHub page. So there it is. So there is a dependency. This one, I will just go to my pom.xml, paste it somewhere here. And I think I have to refresh it because the new IntelliJ does not really catch up the changes in Maven automatically. And then the last thing that you have to do is to, uh, again, go to application properties file, and then you have to turn on login on one specific logger from this library. And the name is so long that I don't even try to remember it. I will just copy it from my notes. So this will be it. And you will like check into the description to either copy exactly this logger, or I will maybe link uh, a GitHub repository there. So this is basically pretty, pretty long name. And then you can decide what is the, what is the level that you want to log. In our case, we just keep it as debug 
and this will log all the SQL statements. There are some more configuration options for this library that I will uh, get into in a second. But what we will do right now is we'll again restart the application and see how does the logging look differently. Okay, I will go back now to my pet clinic, refresh this page, and let's go and see in the logs. So we can see here, again, each SQL statement is, is locked, but it looks very, very differently. So what we can see here is that uh, we can see which data source not necessarily needed, which connection also not, but we can see the what is the execution time for it, if it was successful or not, and we also, in addition to the, to the SQL query itself, we can see the list of parameters. So if there would be more parameters, you would all, of course see more of them here. So with this, it's very easy just to copy paste the SQL statement and use the parameters and replicate it in your, let's say database console, if you're using IntelliJ or if you're using any other uh, database client. And while logging all the SQL statements is quite handy during development, it's not maybe necessarily something you want to run in production. So this library also enables you to configure a couple of things. If we scroll down in this uh, Spring Boot Data Source Decorator page, uh, a little bit down, we will see the properties that we can put to the data source proxy configuration. And the one thing is that you can, of course, just disable logging completely on uh, let's say for certain spring profiles. That means that this data source proxy will not uh, cause any performance degradation. But what is more interesting is that we can also enable only slow query logging, and we can also put a certain threshold. So we can say that if any of these queries will take over, in this case, 300 milliseconds, then it will be logged, but it also will be locked with a warning level that we can also change if we need to, but I think warning is quite reasonable. There are also a couple of other things that you can play with and maybe you will find them useful, but I think that this covers everything that I wanted to say. So uh, I hope this you find this video useful and if you did, please like it. If you want to continue receiving more of this kind of Spring Boot related tips, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video.